On Friday, Hurricane Fiona was on its way toward northeastern Canada after causing heavy downpour and torrential waves in Bermuda and leaving Puerto Rico with damaging winds and torrential rains that led to devastating infrastructure collapse, widespread blackouts, detrimental flooding and at least the full scope of Hurricane Fiona's damage to Puerto Rican school buildings was still being measured and many that were unaffected were being used to shelter the displaced. A majority of the island's schools, particularly in the center, west and south of the island, remained closed Friday. The Department of Education released a list of about 200 schools that were eligible to open Friday because they have water and electricity. Secretary of Education Eliza Ramos Perez told Telemundo Puerto Rico the department's hope is for about 80% of schools across the island to be open Monday. But not all students or teachers will be ready for a quick return to school, thousands of students and families in the hardest hit regions of the island were living without electricity, water, internet and essential services. Back to school comes with a lot of complications. The power situation, restored, but not enough to run AC for students. Not all kids are back in class even with schools opened, said Karina Martinez of Corazon Latino, a national non-profit organization that plans to assess the damage of the hurricane and urgent needs of the people there. Some are worried about what comes next. Teacher Lillian Baron Ferreira this week convened family members outside Luis Munoz Rivera Elementary School in Sanchez to give them study guides to help guard against the students in her special education class falling behind on learning the alphabet. I am concerned that children continue to lag. U.S. Secretary of Education Miguel Cardona vowed this week to help Puerto Rico's schools recover from Fiona once the damage is fully assessed. I am heartbroken to see the devastation that Hurricane Fiona caused for the island and the people of Puerto Rico. Our students, families, and educators are facing another natural disaster, which, compounded by the challenges of the pandemic, is creating collective trauma that we must work together, across systems, to address, he said in a statement provided to USA Today.